Welcome to another Rain On Air video. In this one I'm looking at the Cal IK1 Mark II, although most of what I'll be covering will also apply to the Mark I and all the various rack and desktop versions that exist. So in this part I'm going to be looking at the basics of editing, how to enter data, how to find your way around the various sections, and how to save patches. I'll also be looking at the waveforms, both the standard ones and the PCM samples. But before we start looking at the synth in more detail, if you'd like to support the channel, then please check out my Bandcamp and Spotify, links in the description, and consider leaving a like and subscribing if you want to see more on this series and other synths. So now that's out of the way, let's get on with it. Yeah, I'm going to start looking at the waveforms. There's 256 of them. Some of them are loopable, some of them are one shot, and there are various types. So I'll go through them. I'm not going to play every single one of them, obviously, because this would then become quite a long and probably somewhat dull video. And I'd like to avoid that. Before I get started on that, though, just a quick introduction to how you get into the edit mode and how you actually edit stuff. First of all, pick a patch and then you just press the edit button. From that point, you have these four sections. You have the common section, which relates to polyphony mode, LFOs, and something called auto bend, which I've not investigated yet. Then you have the frequency section, which uh, relates to the course, the fine, keyboard tracking, frequency modulation, so vibrato. Uh, you have the waveforms, which is the one that we'll be looking at the most today and the envelopes, which again, for another time. AM comes underneath the waveform section and the sources are accessible throughout. So to, to go for a, an example then, if you say for instance, it was something in the common area you wanted to edit, then you would press the common, but then you would press it again to get to the next function within that group. And again, and again, and again, and then eventually you get back to the beginning. Um, that's the same for all of them. There are certain functions which exist all of the time. You can select your source and you can mute your source because obviously if you have them on all the time, then you won't be able to tell what you're doing to an individual source. Let's have a look at the source. Now it is actually labeled here. So um, in the edit mode, it's the text above the button relates to the function. Here, where it's one, two, three, four, it's source mute one, two, three, four. And if you select them, if there's a line, then it means it's muted. So I'm down to one source or one oscillator, if you want to think of it like that. Also, at the bottom, it says select the source. Now in the common function, this doesn't make much difference. So if I go vibrato depth, and then put it up to an extreme on this second one. If I then go back and select the first one, the depth is actually the same. So with the common functions, it affects all of the sources to the same extent. Um, whereas if I go to frequency, so you can see that both of them are on zero at the moment, but let's put this one up a bit. And there, there I've got um, two notes with semitone apart because I've tuned them like that. Let's look at the way you actually change the value of thing. So for your fine changes, then you just use the uh, plus and minus, yes and no functions up here, and that will then increment everything by one. But then for large uh, changes, it's all done over on the joystick going left to right. So if we go all the way to the right, we get 24 and minus 24, I mean, on that function. Storing is relatively straightforward. If you're planning to overwrite the patch that you're on, then it's really straightforward because it will just say which one it is. So a quick overview of the waveforms. 
from waveform 1 to 204, you have single wavelength samples. So they're PCM, but they are sampled to a single wavelength, which is then repeated, which gives you the cycle. Now these are split into groups. The first are called the basic waveforms. And then from there, they're organized in terms of frequency. So you have a low frequency group, a mid frequency, a high mid frequency and a high frequency group. And then after that, it moves on to PCM wave group, which are the one shots and the looped samples. The idea of these groups is that you can make an informed decision about which part of the spectrum that you're going to focus on. And the waveforms are then designed to fit in that frequency group. So I'm going to put it down to one waveform and we're currently on wave 44. So I'm going to go right back to the beginning on this one. What's quite surprising actually with the waveforms is that the first 13 of them are just sine waves. And you would think, well, what's the point of that? And it's simply because they're at different frequencies. Let's just quickly step through them. And I think you should be able to hear that. So it's the first 12 harmonics of the harmonic series, followed by the 16th harmonic, which is two octaves above, no, 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 three octaves, which is three octaves above the fundamental. What's the point of that? Because surely you could just tune those things yourself. Well, it really comes into its own when you use the amplitude modulation, because they're going to be precise frequency ratios. So you are not going to have any beats that you would do if it was tuned just slightly out by using notes and sense. And that makes quite a big difference in terms of how you can control the sounds. So that's quite a good feature. Now, this next section is all saws. Now, the reason there are all these variations on them is because there's no filter. So you've got to be able to get something that sounds like a saw, which is being maybe filtered at certain frequencies. I think that's the general idea. So let's go up through. Okay, you can hear the difference on that one. Yeah, so the, the saws actually go up to waveform 32, but there are 19 variations on them. Look at the frequency on that one. Quite a flat distribution. There's quite a few which sound high pass filtered as well. So you've got a variation of filter modes that you could try to emulate. I mean, that one's very high pass filtered. That's the ramps. Now let's have a quick look at the next lot, which are squares. Quite soft sounding. That's more like a full square there. Okay. Um, then we start getting some more individual type things. This is an inverse saw. So the next one's supposed to be triangle. Okay. 
Yeah, okay, so that's fine. It describes itself as random. It doesn't seem random to me. But it is harmonically rich. All right, so after number 40, then we start getting the different looped acoustic sounds. So we've got things like uh, French horn, vibe, electric guitar, acoustic bass, digital bass, pick bass. Um, harmonica, harp, brass, piano. So I'm just going to go through a selection of these. You've got like from number 41 and then it goes all the way up to, let's have a look, it just keeps going actually. So many options. Yeah, 41 to 204 is all the um, acoustic waveforms and there's a lot of variety. So French horn. That's a string, another string, more strings. That's supposed to be a piano, believe it or not. Vibraphone. So that could work well with the AM. This is a type of French horn. So I think this is where the brass settings are. Violin apparently. It only sounds like a sort of synthy violin thing. Okay, vibe. Yeah, that's a bit more distinctive. Okay, uh, round bass 107. Yeah, it's got a bit more character. In the manual it actually shows you a little diagram of the waveform plus the harmonic spectrum and that's actually a really quite useful way to make an educated guess about the type of sound you want. So uh, if I go for something, this, this is the synth bass which is supposed to have quite a lot of harmonics and you, and you can see that yeah it does. It's kind of flat, harmonically rich. Shakahuchi, that's I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I mean, on their own, they're, they're kind of bland, really. They really are. I mean, there's no point tending any other way. Let's see. So we've got Oriental Bell. I think these sort of things is probably going to work quite well. OK, so Oriental Bells, Bells. Koto. It's an electric tom, apparently. Wow, 129. Steel drum. Right, so it's got some voice ones here, that's kind of useful. Just about hear that. Jazz organ, that works quite well. As does that, actually.
I think the more glass-like sounds seem to work the best and I think combining some of those with the AM could be quite interesting actually. I think you get some very interesting sounds. Quite unusual. Sitar. Kalimba. Quite a few kalimbas there. Quite high pass filtered that one. Harmonica, harp. It's supposed to be a sitar, but it sounds quite vocal to me. There's some curious sounds there. As particularly towards the end, I think it becomes a bit more interesting. From 205, you start getting what they call one-shots. These are really going to be set up to be the sort of attack portion of a sound so you'd want that accent at the beginning and then you can settle into the looped waveforms although you can set up each source to be any of these so they could all be one-shotted if you wanted 205 to 234 so let's have a look start off with bass drum snare apparently So all drum sounds here. Piano, really? Mm -hmm. 
This is obviously where some of those more breathy D50-ish type sounds are coming from. And you've got a white noise source. Okay, so those are the one-shot ones where you'd probably be looking to use those as part of the attack portion of your sound. And then the very last section are loops again, but these are sample PCM loops of which are longer than a single wavelength. Well, I really don't know what to make of those. They're called omnibus loops. Just wondered how on earth you would ever go about using those. Um, special effects on YouTube videos? <sighs> it's got some reverse section. Okay, and then what is called alternate. I think it's quite strange that they've chosen to add the drum sounds, but I wonder if it was the case because with the K1 there were no drum sounds, but with the K1 Mark II they've added the drum sounds, and I haven't demoed those yet, but there is a drum section built into this as well. So maybe the idea was that by adding the drum sounds in the synthesis section then you could create your own drums, but then they added them anyway. I don't know, it's, it's a bit of a strange one because I think I would have preferred to have more variety with acoustic instruments than having loopable drums. But it's kind of strange stuff anyway, that's for certain. Okay, so now I've looked at the waveforms in more detail. There's certainly some open questions regarding the percussion samples and whether they really need to be there or not, but Maybe that was just a historic thing to do with the development of the synth. You do wonder if the memory could have been better used with something else, but it is what it is. So, you know, there's always some way to use these things. It's one of the oddities of the synth. One experiment I'd like to try would be to combine the sawtooth waveforms and see if I can get something that sounds um, a bit like a filter sweep. It'd be interesting to try and create that by picking the appropriate waveforms to create a sort of staged development using the envelope. I ran out of time doing the AM this time, so I'm going to combine that with the envelopes and modulation sources in the next video and try and get down to doing some real programming. So if you let's see how that turns out, then please consider subscribing and if you got something from the video, a like would be appreciated. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.